Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about typecasting with our own classes. So, I think I've talked briefly about typecasting with normal data types. Um, it's basically when you have, say, an integer like this. Uh, let's make it 13 and then another integer like 3 whatever and then you want to have a floating point number be uh, the quotient of these two integers so if we do something like this and then let's just go ahead and see how it Um, it does compile even though we're converting these two integers to a float, um, but we only get 4 instead of, uh, what should this be, 4.33333, I guess, 4 and 1 third. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, but it gets rounded because these are only integers, so when you do division with integers, you're going to get an integer out of that division, and then that gets thrown into the floating point, but since it's an integer, it gets rounded, so um, you're not going to get the floating point. So the way around that is to typecast one of these integers into a floating point. And basically that means that you change it into a floating point variable uh, just kind of temporarily for the purposes of this uh, operation. So there are two ways to do this. You can go like this and use the data type as if it was a function name. Or you can also have your data type in parentheses like that, and then that'll type, both of those will typecast the A into a floating point, and you'll get, uh, should get, yeah, four and one third approximately. So, what we're going to be talking about in this video is if you have your own class, again, I'm just going to call it A because uh, I'm not creative enough but we're just going to be demonstrating the point. Um, so if we have our own class like A, uh, how do we typecast that into like an integer or something? Uh, and how can we handle that? Because we do have to specifically tell the compiler how we want it to handle this class because we are making our own data type here. So it doesn't have any predefined rules. We have to tell it everything. So this is just another one of those things that we have to tell it, or we can choose to tell it. You, you don't actually have to provide implementation for typecasting. It all depends on how you're going to be using your class. So first off, I'm going to make a constructor. I'm going to have it take uh, one argument, and it's just going to be an integer. I'll just call it k for no reason in particular. And all I'm going to do is set this private member equal to whatever you pass in in the constructor. So what happens when you do this is, okay, well normally we would declare our instances of uh, classes like this, and we do something like this, where we put the integer between the parentheses, you know, just like a normal function, that's how you would expect. But when you have a class that has a constructor that only takes one argument, you can, instead of using these parentheses, you can actually use an equal sign, because what's going to happen is it's going to take this integer data because if you think about it this 12 is an instance of the integer data type if you can kind of wrap your head around that so this integer is basically going to get type casted into an instance of a because it's going to create a temporary a object with this integer as the constructor argument and then that is going to uh, be assigned to this variable inst right here. So that's basically what's going to go on. So this will compile and work even though you might not expect it to because uh, when you have a constructor that only takes one argument you can just do it with this assignment like this because it's going to typecast the integer into the A. So take note of that. I think I'll actually write it down because these can get confusing. So constructor means typecast from uh, int to a. Okay, so when you have your constructor, that allows you to typecast from an integer data to 
uh, uh, your, your class data, or an A in this case. Um, so what if you want to go the other way? What if you want to have some means to go from A to integer? And if you want to do that, here's how you do it. You act like you're defining another method, but what you type is you type operator and then uh, the data type, so in this case, integer. And then open parenthesis, close parenthesis, just like a normal method. And then you do implement it just like a normal method. Operator int, just like that. And uh, note that we're not even putting in a return type here. We're not saying like int operator int, uh, because that's just redundant. It knows that you're going to be returning an integer because it understands that um, this is going to be for when you're typecasting into an integer. So all I'm going to do for this, pretty simple, I'm just going to go ahead and return our private member. Uh, you could do much more uh, tricky things if you had a more complicated class. But here we're just going to be returning our value, because that's all we want. Um, okay, so let's just go back to like that. I'm going to just use 8. So now we want to make a new integer. Uh, I'll just call it n. And we want to be, and what we're going to do is we're going to use assignment and uh, assign the instance of class A to our integer. And the way this is going to work is it's going to take, uh, take that instance of class A and go to this method because it, it sees that you're trying to make it into an integer. And it goes to this method and then um, whatever the return value is, that's what gets shoved into. Uh, into this variable. So, if you can kind of wrap your head around how all that's working. This typecasting, I'll tell you, it is complicated. Or not really complicated, convoluted is a better word because it can be really hard to understand. Especially because these, this operator thing, as well as these constructors, you can have multiple of these. Like we could have operator float as well if we wanted to do something like that. Uh, and we could overload the constructor. So I haven't really talked about it. I'm probably going to talk about that in another video. So don't worry about that. But you can overload constructors. Like we could define another one that takes a floating point instead. So then we could it go like that. But whew, that is, it can really give you a lot of headaches. Um, so make sure that you really do need to have that implementation if you're going to have it. Don't just do it because it's kind of cool looking because... Uh, I mean, that's not really a very good reason for your programs. Uh, okay, so when we want to go from A to int, that's when we do operator method. So now this should this should compile just fine, I think. Yeah, there we go. Uh, even though we're assigning an instance of class A into an integer. Now if we hadn't defined any of this, I'm just going to use some block comments to have the compiler ignore these lines. So it's now that we haven't implemented this, uh, if we try to compile now, it's going to give us uh, cannot convert A to integer in initialization, which is down here. So you do have to have those in in order for that to work. Uh, so one more thing is you got to be kind of careful about this because if we have a function that's going to take in an integer. Let's, I'll just make an output function and have it output a number, just like that, output n, output number. Um, we can now call this function with our instance of class A because what's going to happen is we're going to use that operator method to convert our class A into an integer or type cast it into an integer for this function. So now this will compile just fine, even though you'd expect this to only be able to take an integer. But it can take uh, an instance of class A as well. So there we go. And it'll say number 8. So it's really important that you understand what you're allowing your uh, classes to typecast into. And be sure that you really do need that implementation if you're going to add it in. Uh, so something to keep in mind when you're designing your classes. Uh, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, rate it high. If you didn't like it so much, feel free to rate it low. 
If you have a question, leave a comment or send me a message. And if you want to see more videos right as they come out, uh, hit the subscribe button. Thanks, you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.